get it? Get it? Get it? It's like the, it's like uh, it's like the album name. It's like uh, you know, dark. Uh, so hey, <laughs> today we are listening to Vince Staples' newest album, Dark Times. I have never, ever, ever, ever listened to Vince Staples. I have had the pleasure of seeing him live though, back in 2022. Call me if you get lost tour. I was able to see him live as he opened for Tyler the Creator. I was gonna listen to him that night though, because he said something that caught my ear. At the end of his set, he said, make sure to go and check out my new album, Ramona Park Broke My Heart. It comes out tonight. I was like, oh, wow, that is a very cool coincidence. Um, but I didn't listen to it, which, you know, might be better because uh, I've been seeing people saying this is a really good album. I cannot wait for this to be my first experience. If you like the video, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And if you want to see the whole thing uncut, $2 Patreon down below. You get to see everything in its entirety. You also get the videos early sometimes. People on Patreon saw this on Sunday instead of Tuesday. I, I say we just get into it. it. Seems like the first song is an interlude, so we are gonna go track number one, close your eyes and swing into track number two, black and blue. I do have the lyrics up, by the way. Just just for y'all to know. Got my cran cranapple sparkling juice. I feel like it's setting the scene. Dark. I mean, it makes sense, actually. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, who can I call when I need help? Juggling, tugging, depression, and pride. Saying it loud, like Jay. Niggas be doing it just to be doing it. We eat them better tomorrow. Real food, stand babies. I know that it's you. Awesome mix of stuff lyrically, so far. Fuck. Fuck, I'm loving this mix. Oh. Mm. So I'm picking up that this is probably a story album, you know, having interludes set everything up. I love how full everything sounds it sounds like uh he put me in the world pretty seamlessly so i like um you know the themes in this him you know standing up for um you know his culture and all of that i love that and then it sort of shifts into him um you know turning it more into a love song with the uh pre-chorus like i know or i feel like it's you yeah look in the mirror something i'm missing damn like that a lot instantly like i'm 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 in it. Everything also just feels good in the mixing and all of that. I love it. I feel like it's been a while since I've heard an album, hip hop album, that's this well rounded out, you know, off of first listen. I'm happy though. This is like, like, I don't know. It's hooked me in a way that I haven't been hooked in a while. And I'm excited to keep going through the story. The issue is I'm sort of bad at following along. So, um, repackage it. People I'm dead, Pat, he's, you know, doing his stuff for the passion of it. Used to be poor, now he's rich. Missing a lady. Okay. Also, I wonder what black and blue symbolizes. My dumbass. Uh, sorry that I completely just didn't think about this at all while recording. But, you know, obviously it's what uh, people have gone through, African American people to be specific, against uh, police officers since, you know, they're doing all that dumb shit that police officers are doing. But yeah, just felt like it was important to put this in here. I'll, I'll get back to yapping. I don't know. I don't know. Ready for track number three, Government Cheese. I promise it's no love lost. Slow down, shit tight, what they tell me. You should try walking like with two left feet. Let the waves roll by, keep my fade low. I can't let the grades grow. Just another day closer to my demise. Question is a hella in the sky. Oh, don't forget to smile. Promise, though, he will never get to see the light of day. Ask how it was, and he see me on ABC. No just pick up when I call right now. Yeah, and don't forget to smile. Maybe not a through and through story album, but you know, it seems like everything's on theme. More, I mean, I expected it to be a little sadder 
it's definitely dark. Since, you know, he's talking about where he's come from. Uh, you know, guilt from having money. Because, you know, people around him turn on him. I like the message of the chorus. Don't forget to smile. Don't you lose your inner child. <laughs> I, would, I, I loved the synth on this. I felt like I brought everything together when it came on in. Drums all super bassy and nice. I feel like I'm, it's going to be consistent throughout the whole project. Yeah, I had to bury my older brother. Fuck. On to track number four. Children's Song. Oh. Fucking with that guitar. Cause I'm fired to the pin free my Apex twin in the street light. I ain't really trying to scrape that rent. It is what it is. Don't play with my crib and go play with your kids, bitch. Gotta keep this shit bliss, gotta keep this shit ignorant. Pray. I've been broke on my life, had to flip it. All these grown niggas living off women. Don't play Damn. with my crib and go play with your kids, bitch. I love how laid back Don't all these have been. Go play with your kids, bitch. Ooh, smooth transition. I have to stop that for a sec, though. What I've read for most of these is inspiration as the biggest thing, because I mean, I I believe that this is all just you know textbook inspiring. He's talking about his hustle, how he's been. I like it. I don't know. The guitar was nasty on this. I liked it a lot. I like. I just love how laid back all this what is. I don't know. I I agree with a lot of people who are saying he's the best uh, putting out projects, and I would put this above other things I've listened to because I feel like stuff like um all the dogs have been sort of uninspired, and there's been good albums like 2093, but the subject matter is you know less of the focus. It's more on the vibe and feel it gives you. This you know obviously you can't compare the two because they're very different, but um. I feel like this is a project that will resonate more with me. If it sounds incredible, has incredible messaging, and uh, it's just easy, fun to listen to, I'm there. That's why Tyler is my favorite. I think he's the most inspiring artist. Maybe, and, eh, yep, yeah, artist slash person I've, you know, investigated it online through his work and stuff like that. And I'm picking up a lot of that sort of vibe and attitude from Vince. So I'm very excited to keep it going. This next song, I think, was the single that was released. Shame on the Devil. These hoes ain't what I need. I need direction. Mm. Still chase thrills. I'm imperfected. Mm. I don't want to talk on the phone. Leave me a message. Beautiful feature. start amazing song for it to be the first single i see why it was you know shows i think all sides that we've heard so far pretty well speaking on his voice now i haven't touched on that i love the way he delivers everything and i love different you know things he does with his voice specifically in verse one he sort of plays with around with it a little bit while still you know being very serious and also baby rose amazing feature like all these have been very common and this is it's just felt nice to sit in these songs but at the same time it's slowly i could feel it slowly gutting me in the feels because like it's all it's all dark it all has that theme but also i'd like to say um a job staying on that theme it's been um i think the cover art has you know i don't know what else it could be this is why i don't like the argument of the Atavista cover art being bad. I feel like it's good because it's sort of putting you in the mind space of Atavista. Because to me, Atavista is sort of like, like, I don't know, I can't give it a location. It's out of this world. It's in a different dimension. It's not here. So it doesn't need a cover. 
And I could sort of say the same thing for this. This, in my head, exists in a void. There have been these dark themes throughout the whole thing, but he's still, you know, overcoming the challenges. But, at the same time, it's still slowly gutting me, and I can feel it. And it's just, you know, just still some sad, sad lines. I'm, I'm having a good time. Excuse me, Patreon. I'm, uh, preparing. How do you say it? This is a word of French origin. In French, it is said as étouffé. Okay, on to track number six, étouffé. Hmm. Mm. Amazing start. Mm. Mm. Ah, fuck. Favorite chorus so far. I don't need your flowers. I'm living. First time I've seen a million dollars. I'm squinting. That's what Granny went when she left Louisiana trying to die. Jim Crow. But you can't escape the master stained glass windows. Can't find the beauty in the darkness like Rembrandt. Everybody gang, gang, gang till it get bad. Do you hear me? Stay silent. I forever be the hardest. Big time. Like the niggas in the wildest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, shit. Nice switch up there, I like that. Holy fuck. Surprised me too, didn't think he'd go for something like that. Incredible, incredible, incredible world building. Holy shit. With, you know, the way it starts with a shooting and, you know, him saying that's how it be happening. Instantly put into the scene, instantly you know, in the mindset, expertly done. I like, um, you know, ending it that way too, with helicopters and stuff like that. It's interesting to see, you know, this perspective. I've, um, heard songs that have, you know, dealt with this same thing, uh, like Kendrick Lamar, him going back to his, um, hood, and, you know, they don't, they don't like him anymore, because he's sold out, because he has money now. But it's very clear that both of these artists still very much care for the people in there. Amazing course to represent that in the Get All the Martian Crash landed them dirty ass apartments. It's also just catchy. The course, I think, catchiest course so far. Speaking on, you know, trying to dodge Jim Crow, we can't escape the master. Still, you know, a lot of racism flying around, which, you know, sucks. Artists, I mean, it's just all, it all sucks, you know? This whole situation just sucks ass. But then again, you know, isn't that part of the beauty of people who make music in this field is they're able to flip that and make that into a positive to, you know, inspire people? Because I'm sure this is going to be a very inspiring album to a lot of people. I could see why people are saying album of the year. This is the first one where the content's in it. I'm like, yeah. Definitely, 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 definitely. Where other album of the year contenders for me is personally off sound and like um with a lot of personal connects because obviously I don't have personal connect to a lot of these things here. Um, I, I I'm appreciating it. <laughs> is it? It's it's really good. We're gonna be going into track number seven, liars. Into track number eight, Justin. If I love you, I can't lie to you. Of course you can lie to me, and you will if you love me. Cause what the hell do I care about the truth? I care if you're there. Mm. And why are you gonna be truthful with me when you lie to everybody else? Lie to me, smile. Treat me the same way you would treat him. I can't treat him. You must. He's happy with you. Of course he doesn't know you're unhappy. You grin at him all day long. And I'm saying, you know, fake it with me. Okay, sorry. I know I said I'll go into the next two. I just want to talk on this. Because this is a very, very interesting to put this here. And I like, you know, where both of them are coming from. This this also hurts because I feel like the guy in the scenario wants to um be authentic with her. There's so much happening with this. I don't know. I can't really. Okay, let's try and break this down. I'm trying to get better at um inspecting shit. If you love me and you going off with me someplace, you're lying to me. So she would rather keep her peace, knowing that he's probably going out with other people. 
but she still loves him. So she's staying in that relationship, even if he is doing stuff. But I'm not too sure if he's doing that type of stuff, because it sounds like, you know, he wants to be truthful to her. But she wants her, him to, you know, give what he's given everyone else. Interesting. I like it. I like it a lot. I don't know if I had it much by saying that, but I, I felt like I had to stop it because that was a very powerful interlude. Up to track number eight, Justin. Mm, beautiful transition. Met this pretty woman in the summer from Qatar. Late night at Jelena, she was eating at the bar. Deeper conversations under surface level thoughts. Asked if she can get a ride to her spot. I said, I got you. She invited me up for a drink. I don't indulge, but the moments with her made me feel so. What's the rush? Right before this woman stole my heart, I see a shadow by the door and hear a knock. And she said, Baby, meet my little cousin Justin. Damn. Mm. Nice to meet you too. Bye. That one fucking cut. Jesus Christ. Amazing storytelling. It's simple, but it's so good. I like how, um, you know, can barely hear the ambulances over helicopters. That wraps it back to, um, I think Shame on the Devil when he was talking about, um, the hood and all that. Simple, uh, scenario. Simple beat. But it just cuts. I think, whether this is true or not, I like to assume that it is, because that's how I like for, you know, to assume on everything artist related, because it makes, you know, stuff more interesting. But this just cuts, you know, getting to know someone, um, you know, feeling you could be with them and then seeing that side of them like, fuck, she said, baby, meet my little cousin, Justin, like that line's going to be one where, you know, I listen to this song and it just goes, Ugh, damn. The also the things this album's made me felt so many different things. I, I see it. I just see why it's album of the year. It's so perfectly executed. Track number nine radio. Riding with my pops in the front seat. Pull up to the block with the real G. My favorite rapper till I hit seventh grade and Aaron played below the heavens and everything changed. Because really then whatever I listen to. Mm. When I got older I realized it was true. We met, she told me she don't ever listen to rap. I asked her why she said no man should speak to women like that. I asked her why she said woman is the key to the earth. Oh. I turned up my hustle, I turned up my session, I turned up my bitch. Oh, oh, like I love the way it's this is chopped in the chorus. A lot of things here I like and feel like I could talk on. Uh I like a lot when uh he was talking about below the heavens and everything changed it's when you know he learned about uh just the art of music and you know having someone say the conversation of this music is realer than blah music i think is a little bit of a muddied conversation because some people don't see music as a way of artistry and you know soul and all of that i personally think like, my favorite music and music I put above others is something that is very the artist putting their soul into it and making something to change, you know, either speak on how they feel or to change something in the world. There is, you know, time and place for other music, you know, obviously stuff that you just put on because it sounds good and it is good for that reason. That's where the main majority of people I feel like get, you know, what they like but, you know he's talking about the day he heard something that unlocked that artistry in him which i like i just like that a lot since i sort of had that in uh junior high i was listening to hjr imagine dragons um oliver tree and um baby no money not to say that they don't have you know time and place i believe um i mean the bigger ones i don't really believe but um like baby no money you know, he's widely respected in, like, um, Asian countries and stuff like that, which is something I wouldn't have known if I still kept up with him, even if I don't, you know, adore his music as much as other people. But then, you know, high school hit, I listened to Igor by Tyler, the Creator. That blew my mind so, like, just wide open. Because that taught me what hip-hop was. That taught me what artistry was, and it like that was the first album I connected to, connected to. 
And I, yeah, that's why the Igor is always going to be my favorite album. But it's cool to see Vince go through a similar thing. Um, and I also like, um, you know, talking about um, the conversation he had um, where she was saying no man should speak to a woman like that. And, you know, his perspective is just why, because he just sees it as um, an outlet to express oneself. And it's also like, I don't believe anybody when they're rapping or making music and, you know, talking about women in that way, fully mean it. I've, I've heard like people like Tyler make that music, but it's so clear that he cherishes women because they should be. <laughs> That's, they, they, they just should be. And it's ridiculous that, you know, some people would say no to that. But I like how he sort of had that with his outlook. And I could definitely see why the girl he was talking to has that outlook too. Both very valid. But yeah, I've loved, I've, I've liked all the conversation pieces on this album. I'll do track number 10, Nothing Matters. Didn't know I was about that life till his was over. You worry about the wrong thing. Why would you tell me that you love me when you don't? Mm. You made a promise that you never do me wrong. Guess mm. that doesn't matter. Fuck. Nothing really matters at all. Love the piano. Drums are also really cool. I like the kick. Mm. Fuck the chorus, man. Mmm. Mmm. Fuck. Beautiful feature. Love it. I I've been liking um. He talks about like in these relationships and with women. He it reminds me a lot of how Tyler the Creator formats and um you know says it. I feel like no other artists other than these two sort of make it sound you know so appealing in a way. But I don't know stuff like this draws me because it just I think it's the biggest thing that could just gut me. It's just personal, and you know, a lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, if not everyone that's been in a relationship, can, you know, relate to this heavily. And I like, I, at first, I didn't really like the title because I'm a pretty big optimist. Um, so we're, I mean, I take nothing really matters, and, you know, that's a fantastic thing. But I like it in this context of, you know, just being like, we've had a promise. I, we had so many good times. You said you would never do me wrong. What the fuck? I guess it didn't matter. And then nothing really matters following that up. Like, yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't know. I also feel like this also feels, in a way, not dated, but it feels like this would be like one of those gems that I listened to from a couple of years ago. Uh, where like this, this is actually just taking me back to rediscovering uh when i discovered tyler and all of that is i got to learn so much about him and the world that he was in i'm learning a lot about vince through this you know i feel like i already have a connection to him where it usually takes three or four albums for me to feel that connect to any other artist and it's it's just all very personal and i love 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 and you know going back on it sounds like something i'd hear years ago it's it's just the production is so well made where I don't think any other project this year really feels this full. This feels like as full as the production and ideas tried on Utopia. Where now that I've listened to this, I think in between those two, everything I've listened to, I don't think there's been anything that's perfected it as much as those two albums. It's making me feel nostalgic in a way, which is awesome. On to track number 11, Little Homies. Mm. Back to that inspiration. Oh, third feature. Cause I can make it come true around this bitch. What kind of nigga say money don't make you rich? Bad decisions over women, everybody want. Left with nothing but a broken heart. You feel it? Streets cold and the road tallest. Concrete with a road blossom. 
Mm. Back to inspirational. I I loved it. I loved the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, a little redundancy there. I've said that for every song, but it's true. Catchy chorus, pre-chorus, really good. I love the line. No, you say you want better, but you gotta feel the pressure. And I just feel like this is an important album. Not only does it sound good, I feel like it's important. Um, that stuff like this is, you know, still being made and still being said to their demographic. Am I the specific demographic? No! I'm not getting that twisted at all. I'm not directly who he's speaking to, but, you know, I feel like, you know, stuff like, stuff like this needs to keep being made. Um, so I feel like artists, as they get bigger, they sort of lose this root. And yeah, this is just, you know, obviously directly inspiring to those people. And I'm glad that he's, you know, making stuff like this so uh, late into his career. I think this is his fifth album, fifth studio album. I also uh, love the mix of dark themes, inspiration, and love. I feel like it's all very well balanced. Where, you know, I thought this was going to be uh, like, a, I, don't, I don't like shit, I don't go outside. I think that's the title by Earl Sweatshirt, um, but I'm present, pleasantly surprised that a lot of these are inspiring and filled with love. And yeah, there is dark, but I think it's a perfect balance. Oh my god. Let's keep going. Track number 12, Free Man. Mm. Oh, it's from um, How You Feel from Snot. That's where I recognized it from. Okay. Mm. I need to watch a show too. That's a reminder. Mm. Sweet victory song. I like how he's, you know, still giving himself the credit for all he's done. Uh, and sort of recognizing where he is. But, you know, he's obviously still very, very, very in tune from where he come from. Fran. Fran. From. Not Fran. Um, and yeah, I also love, I've been loving, loving, loving the pushback on the Grammys. Where I bet there's been a pushback for years and years and years. But, you know, four, three years ago is when I noticed it. Um, yeah, you know, the Grammys is it's a whole stupid thing. Of course, no one could say, you know, this thing is good because of this. Yes, it would still be nice to get an award. I could see that. It's crazy that some people, you know, devalue other artists because they haven't gotten a Grammy. And, you know, it's just, you know, inherently huge and fucked up from the people um, within it. Like, no one's, not everyone's in tune with all the music around the world coming out all the time, so it is impossible. It's so impossible to, um, you know, put the best uh, album out there, especially when, you know, the organizers are outside of certain worlds, some big worlds. Like, I feel like most of the uh, people that vote on stuff there are outside the hip hop world. Um, so stuff doesn't really get, you know, voted on that should or not. Um, you know, people have voiced that opinion on several occasions. Um, but it might not be entirely their fault as the people there, you know, because they're in, you know, their their world where pop is their biggest thing, and they like stuff that sounds good. They don't care about the subject matter, but they need to get more people in there that do. A little sad that we're at the end, but it's been a fantastic project so far. So let's just get into the last and final track, track number thirteen. Why won't the sun come out? I think creativity is the way that we connect to our spirit. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And my body was like the whole like world, I guess. And they were like dying, but like at the same time in another part of my body, like things were being born. I was everything. I was everything at once in my body. Everything is exactly as it should be. People are playing the game that they chose to play. And we are killing each other and being horrible and dark and beautiful and light 
at the same time. Also very it's true. Emotional vulnerability. You said something about like it's easier for a girl to come over and give you pussy than it is for her to come over and give you a hug. It's fucked up. Mm. Back to where we started. What a exceptional finisher. I got full body chills from uh, the piano at the end. I, it was all beautiful. Speech, if you would call it that, um, by Santi Gold. I, 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 she's right. I do truly, I still believe that, you know, creativity is a way to connect to our souls, our spirits. I feel like that's why a lot of people are unhappy. A lot of people don't care to do that. Or, you know, a lot of people think it's cringy or whatever. All that bullshit. And yeah, this also just brings themes of the album together. You know, everyone's living, everyone's dying, everything's happening. But it's all sort of going how it should be. I like the line a lot, killing each other and being horrible and dark and beautiful and light at the same time. Because that's all everyone is. It's unreasonable to hold someone to a standard where they could do no wrong or else they are deemed bad. Uh, and vice versa. You can't have someone just be horrible and not want them to be more. Like, there's so much people, so many people nowadays that have brought so much good art and good ideas and helped a lot of people, and then they do one shitty thing. Whether it be big or small, they still brought the art into the world. So why dishonor, why say no to those ideas if they were pure ideas at one point? Not to say to, you know, um, support people who are horrible, horrible, horrible. But like, I don't know, I like the, this reminds me of the song, it's an unreleased song by Kendrick Prane, where he takes a stance, he raps in the perspective of Michael Jackson and um, Martin Luther King, and talks about, you know, bad, the, some of the bad things that both of them did, and then at the end he speaks from himself, basically saying, without artists on this world, it's just a fucking, it's just a dirt planet with not much on it. I feel like artists push a lot of shit forward. It's crazy that people discredit them entirely, even though they've said good things, have good sentiments, like, you know, Martin and um, Jackson, but they did one bad thing. And if they did discredit those people at the time, what would the world look like now? Like, imagine if we've said everything bad, everything, that one bad thing made all of them bad, and to not to listen to them, what the fuck would that world look like? I, it wouldn't be good. Going into the final thoughts. I think this is an album that was not, surprisingly, not, not, not overhyped by Twitter. A lot of albums this year, I feel like, have been. Um, so I was excited to check this out. I've never listened to Vince again, but this is a very good introduction. I feel like I know where he's from. I feel like I know what he's about. I know his view on um, relationships. I know his, um, he's trying to uplift up other people. The, all the beats, everything sounded very, very, very well thought out, very well produced. Everything flowed into each other. The interludes were all necessary. Beautiful ending, beautiful ideas, things that needed to be said on all of these songs. I, I, I see the album of the year contender, um, you know, talk that's been going around. It's just purely amazing stuff. And also going back the cover art i feel like another reason why people do cover arts like these is to draw your attention on the songs on the lyrics on what they're trying to actually say um unless so the art the cover art and it makes you imagine this however you want to imagine it like he could have done something else i don't believe it's lazy i think everything an artist does um, unless it's like blatant, like if Jojo Siwa pushes stuff out, that's passed through 30 people. She didn't choose, like, anything. But like, people who are actual artists, like Vince, or, you know, Tyler, people like that. Or, you know, Travis Gambino. There is a reason why everything is the way it is. There's a reason why 
these out of vista and this album cover are like this it's not lazy there is a reason and you know whether the artist is gonna say or not it doesn't matter it's i i feel like it's crazy for people to just discredit that because it's like i a lot of people don't keep in mind when they're watching tv or listening to music or something like that every song every episode of something has at least like 20 50 hours of thought put into it into every fucking bit of it so don't discredit anything because there's probably a reason for all that and most of the time if you take the time to actually look into it then yeah there's definitely something there on to the top three favorite songs i i think toffee radio and nothing matters right now are my favorites this is an album i could definitely see no, having every song be my favorite at a point in time. This is an album that's also here to stay in my rotation, unlike a lot of previous albums I've listened to. So, with that, if you made it this far, what are you doing? Might as well subscribe, like, and, uh, you know, $2 Patreon still down there if you want to support me. And I'll see you guys next time.